So welcome to our uh, uh, one of our spring coffee talks. We started these last semester, uh, as, or even over the summer, I guess, uh, as kind of an experiment, as a way for us to have opportunity to connect with you all, give you a chance to uh, hear some of the things that are going on, also provide the opportunity for um, uh, clients out there to share some of the best practices and the things that are going on. So if you have uh, an idea of something that you'd like to share or a question of something that you would like to hear more about or you say, well, this is how we handle it on our campus. Um, how is it handled on other campuses? Uh, we can try and, and find someone to, to speak to that in a future coffee talk. But really the, the outline that we try and cover in each of these is to spend about 20 minutes going through uh, a short presentation or some material and then open it up for questions. Now, because we're in the, the online format, um, it's uh, a little bit tricky sometimes to try and make it work well with the audio and the uh, and everything going in all directions. Um, so we use the uh, chat box in the lower right hand corner. Uh, so feel free to to use that uh, throughout the whole the whole time. I've got a few slides here that I want to share, um, but then use that to ask questions of each other. Um, use that to, to post things. And then, of course, uh, follow up with emails. Email myself or uh, Melissa at uh, ideaedu.org. She'll actually be sending a follow up email with the recording um, from today's session so that it can be used for others on your campus and those kinds of things. So, you've got the chat box in the lower right hand corner. We're recording. Um, I'm going to spend about 20 minutes uh, going over, maybe probably a little bit less. Uh, going over some things that we covered in the idea workshop. I see uh, a couple familiar faces of people who were actually at the workshop, so uh, it'll be interesting uh, if you want to chime in uh, at some point during the conversation and, and let us know what's, what your thoughts were. But my uh, purpose, what I wanted to try and accomplish, is give you a quick overview of what we covered in Austin uh, earlier this month uh, to give those of you who weren't able to attend a sense of what was uh, involved and um, then also to uh, uh, give you a, a taste of the kinds of things that would happen next year. All right, so if you, uh, so I'm gonna just pause here for a second and do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, let's see, if, all right, so let's see. Try the audio setup wizard. All right, so with that, let me uh, switch here to a different view. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the, the information and the slides that we went through in the uh, idea workshop. So I will have the, the chat box going there. I know there's a couple other people from idea that are available. So if, if you still see people uh, running into trouble down there in the bottom, um, feel free to reach out to them or use the chat box as a way to help troubleshoot. But to keep us on task, I'm going to keep on going. So we met in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, the first part of February. We uh, were at the Barton Creek uh, Resort, which is a really, is a lovely location. Um, and so here's here's what we did. There were three main focuses. We wanted, I want when people come to the workshop that there's a train the trainer. Uh, kind of a process so that the people who are there can take the information back to their home campuses. Uh, we love interacting with faculty. We love having the opportunity to uh, work with you on your campuses, but we know that a lot of times the most practical way is for the local person, the local expert, so to speak, to be the one that faculty can turn to. Um, so we will, uh, that's one of the focuses of the workshop. Uh, we also, and this came out really well in the um, it, it, throughout the course of the two and a half days that we did, we were together, the opportunity for you all to interact with each other, just kind of like we're trying to do now in this coffee talk. And there was some really great conversation happening uh, that happened at the table. And then, as much as possible, because we are talking about student ratings, um, which is doesn't uh, inherently lend itself to being an exciting topic. Sometimes we want to try and have fun together. So hopefully, we're able to do that. And I uh, already have ideas of how we could do that better um, next time. So uh, let's see here. We so one of the things I wanted to do in in the process because many in the room uh, already know this, but if not, this is a good chance for you to know it. 
is uh, we have a new platform that's come out in the last year. Um, we call it IdeaCL. We've partnered with Campus Labs to help develop this new platform, and we're really excited about it. So one of the very first things that we did at the workshop was allow people to uh, take the survey. So we that's this process of called eating your own dog food. I borrowed it from software companies, so someplace like Microsoft, where they eat their own dog food by using Microsoft Word. If you're um, you know, employee of Microsoft, you're supposed to be using Microsoft Word and Excel and those kinds of things. If you get caught using a competitor's product, you get in trouble. So this was a process of us trying to see what it looks like. So we actually took the survey and got some really hands-on experience with that process. Um, and we started the conversation, though, of talking about teaching and learning and, and building on that. And so the whole heart of IDEA and the mission behind IDEA is to focus on student learning. Uh, but in order for us to kind of make a fake scenario to do an idea survey, we launched from this pretend scenario where people would start talking about their favorite teaching and learning memories. And we went from there into um, practicing on the survey. But what that also uh, does for us is it helps establish the foundation. Our mission is to help improve student learning. And so to talk about how we have those things in common. And then as people started talking about their favorite teaching and learning memories or memories of things, um, that uh, started out, uh, you know, from the beginning, it, we start seeing the uh, corollaries between the um, learning objectives that are in the IDEA instrument and the teaching methods that are in the IDEA instrument as well. Because train the trainer was one of the key parts of the uh, process, then what I did is uh, went into a session of where I would say, we, we need to help faculty understand their role in selecting learning objectives. So um, I just walked people through how I would do a site visit or a webinar um, about learning objectives. And throughout that process, then uh, we would, at, I would stop and people could ask questions. And uh, we were able to kind of unpack the process of a webinar. So if you've been, if you've, uh, had me do a webinar or one of the idea people um, give a webinar on campus about how to select the learning objectives, how to make use of the faculty information form and those kinds of things. This is the opportunity to sit down and unpack that process and then have conversations at the table about what, uh, how, how does this work? How does this translate on your campus? What are, how do you help get faculty to buy into the process? Or what are the cases where um, the system is um, designed? How do you take advantage of the system uh, to autofill or help auto-populate some of those um, those key learning objectives, and uh, talk about uh, some of the ways that that can happen, especially um, building early on in the in the session for later when we start talking about alignment of learning objectives across multiple um, uh, multiple course sections or throughout a program and those kinds of things. So I just got the slide in here about lunch because it really was neat to see. Uh, people from different types of institutions from different parts uh, of the country coming together and sharing their best practices with each other. And so just like uh, we did the, the selecting of the learning objectives, we went through report interpretation and walked through that same process and said, these are the key areas. Here's why we talk about what we do when we're doing a report interpretation webinar and then allowing people the opportunity to interact with uh, one another. Um, around that as well. So I just I want to pause a little bit because I referenced earlier on about you know uh, our mission is to improve student learning and uh, and how this has happened. So if you've been in, in our webinar, if you're at the the workshop, um, then you know the the root of this story. But the the root of this particular story, what this slide is talking about, is a faculty member whose disciplinary expertise was in the science of breeding chickens, and they were trying to translate that into uh, teaching biology 101. Uh, but to encourage this process of how do we share our stories, how do we take um, what is uh, kind of that everyday scenario and apply it to something like student ratings and specifically the idea system. So in this particular case, I won't go through the whole story here. Um, but in this particular case, that faculty member whose disciplinary area was in chicken breeding uh, had some st stumbled out of the block, so to speak, in translating that into helping students learn on those key uh, learning objectives. And so from that story, 
uh, because the department chair then sat down with this faculty member and said, you know what, let's look at your idea paper. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at your idea reports and, and go from there. So we, and that's where we jump to when we're talking about this report interpretation, we're looking at the formative tab on our newest platform and helping, um, helping a, an individual faculty member right away look and see what areas might, might I focus on first and developing a plan of action. So again, fostering that process of understanding not only the data, but the way to communicate and unpack the data uh, in a meaningful way at, at an individual campus. And this is one particular way that I suggested it, but it was interesting to hear how people talked around the table of other ways that they might facilitate that process. So just very quickly, um, looking at our, um, our newest platform, the IDSCL platform, if you're familiar with the, the paper process and you, you're familiar with that four-page report, this is page three of the report, that, that uh, formative page that's showing the interaction between the teaching methods and the learning objectives. And it contains all of the same data, all the same richness of information um, that's on that page three of that paper report, but now it's much more consumable. Um, it's pretty uh, easy to look at something like this as a faculty member and say, okay, where do I need to focus first? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on these areas um, down here that are colored differently. And again, I'm not gonna dive straight into uh, all of that, but we, um, you know, we looked a little bit more at Okay, let's look at the interaction between the teaching methods and the learning objectives, which learning objectives are relevant um, at, to the, you know, what was selected by the faculty as important or essential. Uh, so again, we were able to, to unpack the understanding of the reports and the richness of the data, um, and it all started with launching from that story. So in the case of the story of the, the faculty member who is the expert in chicken breeding, they sat down with the department chair um, looked at this information, picked one or two teaching methods that they wanted to launch into. Um, we also highlighted um, the information, you know, which, how, which teaching method is highly correlated with the greatest number of learning objectives. So then you even have a strategy of, let me just focus on this one first. I'm a very busy faculty member. I don't have the um, uh, ability to redesign the entire course. What's one or two things I can do? And that goes to this pod idea note. So now in the new platform, it's built right into the, the report. And so, um, you know, you, the faculty member then has a plan of action. Oh, okay, I can see, um, here's a couple of helpful hints, how, you know, how I might do this if I'm teaching it online. And, uh, and then in addition to that, we have the additional resources. So in the workshop, you know, we sat down and we not only showed uh, those things in particular, but we also were able to pause and talk about, okay, how does this work on your campus? What are other success stories you've had or areas maybe of, of, of trouble and frustration? And it's really fun to see a person that's in a, a STEM field talking to a person who's um, a dance instructor or to see a person who's at a community college speaking with someone who's at a flagship university and finding out that there's some commonality um, across uh, all of these particular issues of making the most of the idea data and then for them to be able to wrap that understanding and learn from one another and wrap it into the, the information that's on the reports. So we spent a good amount of time looking at the dashboard on the newest platform. Again, talking about how, you know, there's all these areas um, that are you can find on the, the paper reports um, and how to understand you would toggle between the different views instead of having a, a grid and a graph there um, and strategizing how um, making use of this information um, and a particular campus culture is useful. So here's an example of like the progress on relevant objective section. You know, in this particular case, there are five learning objectives that were selected, one essential, four important. You see the distribution of the scores, the converted scores, uh, the, you know, the, the description of the course and the students, um, you know, their amount of reading, amount of work and other non-reading assignments. So I really enjoyed that part. I, I enjoyed the aspect of allowing people to um, do a behind the scenes look at uh, how to interpret the reports. In that process, people who are new to IDEA, not only do they get kind of that best practices scenario from different people at the table who've been around IDEA maybe for, uh, you know, several years or, or you know, even at least several semesters. Um, but then they also are able to get to kind of play with the concepts, uh, so to speak. So we did, we talked about the validity and the reliability of the ID instrument. This comes up quite a bit when we're visiting um, on different campuses. And what's nice about coming to the IDEA workshop is uh, 
uh, Steve Benton, our senior research officer, is there, and he's able to answer directly. So he walks people through. Um, he's very familiar with these reports. In fact, he wrote idea paper number 50, um, and we have a new update to a technical report that's coming out. Um, so it would, it's nice to have the author of the paper there in the room to start asking questions and, and some of those variations on, well, what if it looks like this? Or what happens when a, a faculty member asks about that? Or I've had a question about this. Uh, is right there to ask questions too. And it's also great feedback for us as we hear questions from people in the room. Um, it gives us insight into how we can adjust or um, make sure that we're being clear, more clear in areas that we thought we were already clear on. Uh, but even just for the people that are in the room right now, um, if you do have questions on your campus about validity and reliability, uh, these three papers are great places to start. They give the foundation of how the instrument was built. Uh, they give the formula for the adjusted scores and why the adjusted scores are there. And then idea paper number 50 is the one that talks about the, the research around student ratings in general, not just the idea uh, student ratings instrument, but just in general best practices and the valid use of student ratings uh, for understanding the teaching and learning dynamic in a class. Um, so we also talk about, it's, it's, I feel like this is fun because I'm an idea nerd at heart, uh, to talk about other ways that the idea instrument has been uh, measured against outside sources. So you know, idea compared to instructor self ratings, idea compared to ratings by administrators, peers, alumni, uh, trained observers, review of course materials. And there's there's validity uh, between all of these different kinds of things. So I it's fun to present that um, at the workshop and then to allow the um, participants to ask questions and, and think about it. So all throughout the workshop, and we're still in day one right now, um, we would pause and, and, and give opportunity to ask questions, but then also, again, from that perspective of, is this a question on your campus? Is it not a question on your campus? Are there things, how is this um, being utilized well on your campus? And uh, I'm, I'm a big uh, yeah, uh, connecting person. I, I really like to see people connect. When I was a faculty developer, I did that for about 10 years. Uh, that was one of my favorite things, is to have people from um, the biology department, talking with people from the art department, talking from the, uh, the teacher's college, you know, talking from the, the music department, and them being able to share best practices and say, oh, I never thought about doing my test that particular way, or I never, oh, that's really interesting how you all um, assess student learning on that over there on the other side of campus. And so to be able to do that at a grand scale at a national level is a lot of fun for me. So that was our first day. Um, the next day we went, um, had set aside for, um, to be a little bit more in depth, I guess, to start looking at how do you take the idea data and look at it in an aggregate uh, familiar, how you look at it in a larger context um, beyond the individual faculty member. So uh, Pat Sullivan, who's our uh, product development uh, person at IDEA, who is also a dean, uh, for several years, um, walked through the process of, of using IDEA as part of a balanced faculty evaluation system. If, if you've sat in and on, in on any of our webinars or if we've been able to come and do a site visit, one of the things we really talk about is that the IDEA system is designed for a specific purpose. Um, you know, a lot of times a typical campus will have that three-legged stool for as far as a faculty member's role is concerned, the teaching, the scholarship, and the service. And the IDEA instrument is designed to be a very valid and reliable measure of only a part of that teaching part of that, of that stool. Um, so we, you know, we'd advocate for the best use is to have other sources of evidence um, that would be incorporated into that teaching component, whether it's peer evaluation or self-evaluation. And, and so Pat was able to sit down and unpack what does that look like and give some examples, but then also did a really great job of facilitating conversation at the tables with one another uh, to hear how, how faculty evaluation is done, what other sources of evidence um, are incorporated into that uh, beyond the IDEA system. And then to kind of summarize those things, uh, one of the things that we also tried to do, which I think we can do a better job of next year, is to have kind of a, an ongoing 
record of the ideas that were coming out from the table discussions. So that's shared out to all the participants. Um, we tried using a, a Google Doc this time, um, and, and we might find a, a, a better nuanced way to do that next year. So that when you leave the, the workshop, um, you're not just leaving with your own knowledge and your own notes, but you also can um, benefit from what others have said. Uh, you know, key ideas, great ideas, things to take home um, to do next time. So again, I can't emphasize enough, you know, the breaks, there's great conversations going on, lots of the ability, I, I joked in the workshop to tackle Steve Benton, our senior research officer, with that question that you're getting asked on your campus or the question that you have of your own. Um, that's one of the fun things for us is that we get to hear um, your questions and then you also have the opportunity um, to interact directly with the, with us on the ins and outs of how the idea system works. And then building activities around and reflection around, okay, what can I, how do I take this back home? What questions do I have? Um, what might, what might we do differently? So uh, our, our president, Ken Riles, um, had a session where he talked about uh, how do you use the idea data at a group level? Um, and specifically uh, on our new platform showed some of the tools our our unit summary report um, that talks about such things as, you know, the number of classes that are in the report, what kind of response rate came in that, the number of the average number of, of objectives that were selected for that particular uh, unit, and then for all 12 of the learning objectives um, for that entire unit, um, seeing how, what kinds of progress that the students made um, on those kinds of things. And then that led to a conversation of talking about how you, if you take the idea learning objectives and align those with an existing curriculum, you can start identifying gaps um, in that curriculum, but then you can also um, find areas that you're emphasizing very well. So like for this example on the screen, uh, learning objective uh, two looks like it's being emphasized quite a bit um, because the idea system uh, has the correlational studies and the research behind which teaching methods are most highly correlated with all 12 of the learning objectives, you could then start building some developmental planning uh, for a unit or a, a group of faculty or for a program and say, well, we know these three teaching methods are highly correlated with learning objective number two. We're gonna uh, intentionally build some, some uh, programming around how to facilitate that process for our instructors and our faculty to uh, increase the use of those teaching methods. So this uh, unit summary report helps facilitate that kind of uh, conversation and you get insight onto the progress on the relevant objectives um, and see the raw averages. There's also the comparative against the idea system uh, and those kinds of things. So it's, I always enjoy um, giving Ken the floor because he also has been a dean uh, for several years and he brings a lot of personal expertise uh, to the table and he knows the kinds of questions that uh, that come up and also his campus used idea for years as well. So he's he's um, he's always fun to listen to and I feel like he brings uh, a great resource to the table. This uh, screenshot's a little bit difficult to to see but at this unit summary level you can also see how frequently the teaching methods are being used um, across that particular unit. So again going back to that developmental piece and knowing that there's correlational strength between certain teaching methods with certain learning objectives it gives a, an overview and the ability to start making some data informed decisions on on how to uh, focus on on programming development um, targeting even if it's just uh, you know a common reading in a department or at a you know department meeting here's three strategies to um, uh, stimulate student interest beyond that of, of others of other courses that they've taken and that's all built right into the the new platform the, those reports uh, so then Dr. Benton took the floor again, we're in the second day, and was talking about aggregate data and how to make best use of the aggregate data. I'm going to come back and, and uh, refer to this a little bit later. And so how institutions can take their own data and make best use of that data. Then after the lunch break, um, we invited a couple um, uh, dynamic users, I guess is, is what I'll say, of, of IDEA and uh, gave them the floor to, to take. So we talked a lot about theory from the first day and a half, and now these uh, individuals were able to come up 
and give examples of this is how we make it work on our campus. This is how we use idea for our faculty development or faculty evaluation. Here's how we use the numbers and we use the aggregate data uh, to make some key decisions um, in our uh, teaching and learning process. Uh, then we had uh, Daphne Bernard came and she actually gave a, a, a coffee talk for us last year. Uh, so there's a recording of that. Um, she, we, I asked her to come and kind of revisit that same talk it, topic. Uh, because they were able to take some of the theories and the concepts that we uh, laid out in the idea workshop and use that to meet their accreditation goals for their school of pharmacy. Um, and so it was really interesting to see how how that site visit went with their accreditation team and um, how the idea data fit what they uh, were needing and, and to get some insight from her and the kinds of feedback uh, that the accrediting board had. So it was also good. So even though we we're talking about a school school of pharmacy, I mean, obviously, you know, the uh, gen ed uh, people that are working in the gen ed program or in the biology or in, in the math or the history department, I mean, there's corollaries and there's time built in um, to talk about, okay, how does this look at your campus? So those were two very full days. Um, and then on the last day, um, gave the floor back over to Pat to talk about something that's coming in the pipeline. And so this is good for people in, in the room. We're piloting a new version of the IDEA instrument. Uh, still same same process, still teaching methods and learning objectives, um, but based on our, our uh, research and other uh, research that's done out there, other accrediting standards or other uh, best practices like the AAC and ULEAP standards, uh, for example, we um, want to see if there's other questions that um, would be a better fit. And we also know that there's some questions that maybe it's time for them to be phased out and new questions to be brought in. So uh, with this pilot, I, I keep going back to this slide. Um, the pilot is happening this semester and we're anticipating um, for a spring 2016 or sometime in the 2016 calendar year of having a new diagnostic form that actually will end up being shorter, but it will include um, new items on quantitative reasoning, service learning, um, uh, some of those things. Actually, if you go to our website now and look up IDEA2, uh, you'll find a lot of resources about the pilots and how we're going about the process, crosswalks that we're anticipating. Another thing that Pat was able to talk about that's rolled into idea two is we have a new instrument it's mentioned down here at the bottom our um, teaching essentials so teaching essentials so we have the diagnostic feedback which is the interaction between the teaching methods and the learning objectives we have a learning outcomes form formerly called uh, the short form thanks angela for paste, uh, putting the link there in the chat box uh, used to be called the short form now we call it learning outcomes because now technically we have two short forms uh, the learning outcomes form focuses entirely on the learning outcomes and it's designed for lab courses, clinicals, practicums where uh, the teaching part of it is not in that quote unquote traditional method. So coming out this next semester uh, on the new platform is a teaching essentials form. It's the seven teaching methods in the idea system. Uh, so they're familiar items. It's the seven teaching methods that are most highly correlated with the, those two overall ratings, overall excellent course, overall excellent teacher. And so now we end up with a, the ability to, let me see, it. yeah, here we go. This is, I'm, I'm stealing Pat's slide here, uh, where you can kind of build a, a toolkit for, for different um, scenarios for different needs. Uh, so you have the teaching essentials, which could be a short screening tool, um, or it could be used in certain conditions where uh, situations that might fit. So you've got a, a tenured faculty has has demonstrated excellence in their uh, ratings already, um, but you want to make sure that there's a continuous process that it's it's building uh, building on the data and those kinds of things involved. Uh, corollaries on the other end of the spectrum, um, you have multiple courses of multiple sections of the same course, and several are taught by adjuncts. Uh, the ability to do hands-on development. Um, and that environment can be kind of challenging. So the teaching essentials form um, might be beneficial there. Um, the diagnostic feedback, again, is kind of that full diagnosis. What's the interaction between the teaching methods and the learning objectives? Um, the learning outcomes, as that mentioned down here at the bottom, is focusing just on the learning outcomes. And then over here in the corner on the left-hand side is um, 
a tool we're calling uh, feedback. And what this does is it takes uh, the teaching essentials form or the, some of those key teaching methods and takes it out of the uh, end of class uh, ratings process and turns it into a in the middle of class uh, feedback system. So it would be, you know, kind of akin to the, the clickers. And um, it's the ability to say based on how let, let's talk about this week, you know, the, the unit that we covered this week. Give, give me, as an instructor, it's completely up to, to the instructor to initiate this process. Um, it's, it's designed to be completely formative. The, the feedback um, is completely in the hands of the instructor um, to look at. So at the end of a unit, an instructor could say, okay, here's some questions on, on the teaching methods. Uh, give me some feedback on, on um, you know, what your perceptions were. And then the instructor is given uh, a chart across time. You know, they can, they can uh, give this quick survey, this quick pulse, um, you know, once a month or, you know, after a particular unit. And they can start seeing some trends. And it really helps fine tune for an instructor. Uh, okay, when I put together a group project this way, the students are giving me feedback that shows this. When I put, um, when I give a lecture in this particular way, I'm getting this kind of feedback. So it really helps. Um, give some of that, for lack of a better term, instant feedback on how the instructor adjusts their teaching and how the students are perceiving what that's going on. And because it's tied into the idea system, it can be really beneficial when we start talking about the connections to the learning objectives um, and those kinds of things. Uh, just a second here. Apologize. Okay. So um, Pat was able to... Um, dive into that. And then I, this is the thing I said I wanted to come back and talk about. Something we're also working on is an API access to our uh, to the data, to the idea system. So uh, building the or releasing the ability for a campus to build their own uh, application program interface to the data and, and giving carte blanche, I guess, is the right term, free access to the data to ask the questions that you would want to ask of the questions of the data, um, not um, tied directly to the reports that we generate. Um, and so that's that's in the process too, it's called the solution suite or the, or the data portal. Um, that's in testing and, and um, being put into practice now. From there, um, I, was, I was very glad that Jessica Fronksack from Campus Labs, for those of you who um, are on our new platform and have had a chance to interact with Jessica, She's an excellent, uh, excellent person, knows her stuff, has been in the, pro in the, the uh, student ratings business for almost 10 years. Um, and we wanted to talk about response rates. And we're able to go through the best practices uh, and talk through what that looks like, talk about um, some strategies to do that and building a communications plan. But then also um, was able to uh, show how other campuses have made use of it and talk through some of their strategies and how they've put it into practice, how they've leveraged uh, the tools that are built into the into the new platform um, to make this a reality and how they've benefited from that. And then also to kind of um, to give some, you know, compare and contrast and say, this is how this particular campus did it. It may not work well on your campus. And, and again, going back to those uh, table conversations and being able to bounce ideas off of one another and to be able to ask how you know how did this work for you well I can't see that working in our campus or how did you overcome this particular issue or those kinds of things and then finally the last thing we did um, were, was able to then say okay we know that, th that in the room we have people that are in multiple different platforms we're going to set aside dedicated time with the, the resident expert and you're able to ask everything you ever wanted to know, um, but we're afraid to ask, you know, one of those kinds of things. And so you're able to ask directly your questions about, okay, when we do this, what happens on your end? We're running into a problem with the forms when we do it this way or that way. Um, so tried to build in that a little bit each day, but then we had a dedicated time um, at the end. So I kind of went over my 20 minute goal there. So I apologize a little bit for that. But really, that's kind of the heart of the coffee talk is to give you a quick synopsis. Um, this is what we covered um, in the uh, idea workshop. That's the kind of thing that we'll build on for uh, next year. And let's see here. I don't know if I can switch back to my other screen. Um, 
but wanted to now turn it over to you I um, to see if you have other questions, things that I, I didn't talk about that you're hoping to hear more about. I do know that there's at least one or two people um, who were able to join us for the workshop this year um, to give you a chance to, to add your own comments or thoughts on what you thought was your favorite part. If you could, you can say, this is my favorite thing about being in the idea workshop. Um, that would be great. So what other, uh, use the chat box in the lower right hand corner. Um, what other uh, questions or things uh, do you have for us about either what happened in Austin earlier this month or what you might anticipate happening uh, next year? It is the same week, first week of February in Charlotte. Uh, I don't have the exact dates in front of me. I apologize for that. But um, I might be able to pull that up here. I don't think. I, don't, I probably would break something if I tried to do that. So first week of February in Charlotte is next year's IDEA Teaching and Learning Assessment Workshop. Yeah, so what questions do you have for us? And just use the uh, chat box in the lower uh, right hand corner. Again, and I'll keep recording because sometimes the questions are useful. And um, and that way you have that to reference back when Melissa sends out uh, the link to the recording. Okay, I see a few people are typing questions down there. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. 2016 workshop is in Charleston. I keep saying Charlotte. Sorry. My, my bad. Charleston, Marriott, February 3rd through 6th. Um, registration for that goes open uh, probably around October, um, if not a little bit before. Charleston, I have to keep, I kept saying Charlotte, Charleston, I have to get that tattooed somewhere. Okay, question from Zach. Um, Rebranding, getting away from calling these course evaluations. I'm curious as to how people avoid using the E. SRI can be clunky. Survey has some negative connotations, et cetera. Any ideas? It's a good question. We actually, yeah, the E word. Um, we uh, intentionally use student ratings of instruction for that exactly that reason, um, because really the students are not evaluating the faculty, um, especially not in the idea system. The idea system, uh, students are giving a rating of some specific things. They're rating how frequently they observe teaching methods. They're rating how much progress they made on selected learning objectives, those kinds of things. Um, yeah, student ratings. I don't know I'm curious to see how others in the room respond to that if you if you're also trying to move away from the evaluation word. Okay, so uh, Andrea's question, interested in hearing more about what is coming in regards to institutions being able to adjust some of the survey questions. So uh, hopefully, let me make a point of clarification here, and, and hopefully this also answers the question. Uh, so the, the instrument uh, is, it's not new Coke, for lack of a better term. It's the same uh, instrument with the exception of making some, we're, we're, doing, we're doing some research now, we're piloting the possibility to add some new questions, but it's a research-driven process. And at the, by 2016, it will be a standard set um, of questions. So uh, I wanna be clear that it's, um, it's not the questions that can be selected, it's the, the survey form and giving the opportunity for an institution to say, okay, we wanna use the diagnostic form, which takes the idea teaching methods and the idea of learning objectives um, and, and that's it's diagnostic because it's giving you a report that shows the interaction between those teaching methods and learning objectives or you could use the learning outcomes form which focuses on the idea learning objectives the learning outcomes and then this new instrument that we're building
is the teaching essentials, which is this, it's the seven teaching methods from the idea system that are most highly correlated with those overall excellent teacher, excellent course. So we have three different instruments that can be used, but it's a standard set of teaching methods and learning objectives. Now, the other part, Andrea, that you might be referring to that I was talking a little bit is this tool we're calling feedback, I think is what we're calling it right now, where it's that formative piece that a faculty member um, in a class could say of the idea questions, here's the seven idea um, teaching essentials. I want to get feedback from the students on, on these seven items or three of the seven items. And again, that's not, it doesn't roll into the reports that come out at the end of the semester. It's more of an immediate feedback, almost like a clicker uh, kind of thing that students would respond to right there you know, at the end of class. I don't know, hopefully that clarifies a little bit more or answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Andrea. We're we're excited about it too. There's a lot of um, potential and possibilities, and I don't have because it's still in beta. Um, I don't have. I've seen some screenshots of what the reports look like, and and across time, the faculty member is able to click on, and you can see trends. Um, yeah, it's really. Um, yeah, we're excited about it too. Zach, did that help? Again, I don't see anyone else um, responding to the question about moving away from the term evaluation. Um, but just my thinking out loud about why we're intentional with using student ratings as opposed to course evaluations, um, is that helpful at all? And still open it up for others in the room to, to uh, make suggestions or enter thoughts about how you address that. Yeah, so the, uh, the materials from the 2015 workshop, uh, we, we did all of that electronically and paperless. I, they, I kind of waffled back and forth, Cheryl, to be honest, because they, they make the most sense in the context. So as we went through the workshop, you know, we were relaying, this is why this is in here. This is what this means. Um, you know, some, some, we would acknowledge, you know, this example is the best example, but now that you've seen the presentation, it makes a little bit more sense. So I guess I'm a little hesitant to just. Uh, release those all into the wild because I feel more comfortable that they make the most sense in context. So all of that being said is uh, how about you shoot me an email and um, I can give you access to the uh, to the resources but then also kind of walk through uh, what they are and, and how they're put together. And plus, you know, I won't lie, then it gives us more opportunity to interact with each of you as clients and hear your questions and talk to you. So it's, yeah, there's a, a little bit of method to that madness too. Um, okay, so Zach uh, responded, tries to go with student ratings whenever possible. The platform is called Course Evaluations and says it on the screen. Um, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, so the the little bit of history, because this did come up in the workshop, and so I'll talk about that. So uh, Campus Labs is a technology partner, and, and at IDEA, um, we had a choice to make. We could go into the software business, or we could partner with someone that had the same core mission of improving student learning, but had much more expertise uh, on the software side of things. And so their instrument that they that we built our platform on was called Course Evaluation. It was designed to be, um, you know, kind of facilitate that homegrown uh, instrument. So that's a good question. I'll, I'll bring that up with uh, Jessica uh, next chance we get to talk about it. Any other questions or, or comments or thoughts? I um I know that there is another coffee talk on the horizon for March. I apologize that I don't know that right now for the recording, uh, but in the follow-up email, I'll ask Melissa to make sure to include that. We're trying to do about one a month during the uh, the traditional fall and spring semester, uh, and then maybe a, a couple uh, spaced out over the summer. So uh, thank you for. Uh, taking the time to join us. I hope you enjoyed your coffee. I have my Dr. Pepper here. Um, I was able to get in a couple sips while people were typing in questions. Um, but we will be in touch tomorrow. I see uh, Angela's typing here, maybe in anticipation to, ah, there we go, thank you. New coffee talks are listed there at that URL. Um, yes, so thank you for, for coming. I hope you enjoyed your coffee. I hope we were able to um, give you some insight and uh, I do appreciate uh, 
uh, everyone taking a little bit of time out of their day uh, to meet with us. Thank you, Angela, also for posting last um, Coffee Talks. All right, well, thank you, everyone, and have a good day. I will keep the recording going and hang out in the room for a few more minutes in case there's any um, kind of last minute questions people wanted to ask those kinds of things. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a good day.